Welcome. In this video we will talk about microcontrollers uh, and specifically we will talk about directives and expressions. So when we have a programming file uh, the assembler has lines of code and basically our lines of code can have either instruction or mnemonics which are the ones we have been seeing. It can also have directives uh, and also labels and comments or empty lines. So a line of code can take any of the following forms. Now in our assembler, uh, again, we can have different things. We can have instruction or mnemonics. Now the interesting part of the instructions is that they are translated into opcodes. What this means is that these instructions are going to be stored in the flash memory of the microcontroller. As I said before, we also have assembly directives, which are orders for the compilers. These are not translated into opcodes. That means that they won't be stored in the flash memory. Uh, they can define macros, they can initialize memory, etc. And an important part that I want you to understand in this video is that we can have expressions. Now, expressions are the way we work with uh, operands or constants. An expression is just a different way of expressing a constant. So, for example, it is the same if I say I have a 1, this is a constant, or I can have an expression that says 2 minus 1. Now, this is an expression. I'm giving an operation. But the operation is working with constants. So all the time, this expression is always going to be 1. Again, I want you to notice the difference between the 1 and the expression that it's telling me that I'm going to subtract the constant 2 minus the constant 1. But at the end, the result is exactly the same. Inside expressions, we have the operands, which are the constants. In the example I just gave you is 2 and the 1. The operators, which in the previous example was the subtraction, and the function, which I haven't given you any example of this. Now, before going with expressions, I just want you to take a look at some of the most used directives. Now, when we work with expressions, we have different operators. There are a lot of operators. Here you have a list of all the operators you can have. You can have a logical knot, or you can have a bitwise knot. A logical knot, the result can only be uh, 0 or 1, or true or false. In the bitwise knot, we can have any constant. For example, for an 8-bit constant, we can have any number from 0 to 255. So in these two instructions are very different, even if they are both called knots. We have a lot of operators, but we will see the ones that we use the most for programming our microcontroller. So let's start with the operator bitwise not. This operator is similar to the com mnemonic, with the difference that it inverts the bits of a constant. Remember that the com mnemonic, uh, you can have something like com register 16. So whatever we have in register 16 is variable. We don't know the contents of register 16. On the other hand, when we have the operator, uh, we are going to work with a constant. So the constant is always going to be known. It's not going to be variable. It's going to be fixed. So this is the syntax. We have the operator and then the constant to invert. So let's see an example. We have the inversion of this value. Now, of course, this expression is supposed to invert all the bits of the constant bit by bit. So the result of this expression would be this. So these two are exactly the same. Now we have another operator which is the shift left. Now this operator is similar to the LSL mnemonic with the difference that the logic shift left mnemonic shifts the bits one location. And this operator has the possibility to indicate how many shifts we want in a constant. So this is the syntax. We have the constant that we want to shift, and then we have, on the right, the number of shifts we want to make. So what happens if we have this? We have the constant 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 in binary, and we want to shift this constant two places to the left. Well, this expression is supposed to make two shifts to the left, so the result would be this one here. Take a look that here we have two zeros because there was no information to the right, so we fill it with zeros. 
similar to the LSL demonic, but the zero one that goes into the two most significant bits, these two are going to be removed. So the result is actually going to be this. Then we have the bitwise OR operator. So the bitwise OR operator is similar to the OR mnemonic. We have a constant number one OR with a constant number two. So what happens if we have this? Well, we're going to have a bitwise OR operation between this bit and this bit. And of course, in this particular case, zero for zero, it's equal to zero. And then we're going to perform eight times this operation. And of course, the result, it's going to be that. And if you take a close look, this is as if we were combining two numbers. We have a one in the position number one uh, in the first constant, and then we have a one in the position number six. And at the end, two ones are on in these two positions. Then we have the operation AND. Again, this operation is a bitwise, so it's very similar to the OR with the difference that, of course, it performs the AND uh, logic function. And of course, if we see this example, well, we will see that uh, these two constants, if we AND them together, then we're going to get this result. The reason why is because everything that is zero, it's going to be cleared. And only when two constants have a one in the same place, then that one is going to remain. Now, why are we seeing expressions? Well, we can combine the operator's uh, logic shift and the operator's OR. So, for example, uh, you will see that we need to assign certain values later to some bits inside our register, specifically in some input output registers. Uh, since those bits activate some specific behavior in the peripherals of our microcontroller. By using these two operators, we can build an expression to easily assign the wanted values to a specific register. Uh, so let's suppose we want to turn the bits number 2, and the bit number 5, and the bit number 7 inside a register. So we can build an expression as follows. Now, if you take a look at this, what we're saying is that we have a 1 shifted to places. This shifted to places would be that. So I'm going to write these three constants separately. This one here would be, this one here would be, and finally this one here would be. So these three constants, we are combining them with OR. So we perform the OR operation between these three constants, and at the end we get this. So you can see that with this expression we are telling the microcontroller which bits we want to turn on in this constant. We want to turn bit number 2, bit number 7, and bit number 5. Remember that this is bit number 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So instead of writing this constant, we can write this expression. And this expression is a better representation of which bits we are turning on in our microcontroller. Now, another application is when we want to turn on specific bits uh, with expressions without affecting other bit values. So for example, if we want to turn on values, we use an OR operation with a constant that has a 1 in the places we want to turn on. So, if, for example, if we want to turn on the bits number 2 and number 3 of the port, we can use the following. So, what we're saying is that we have, uh, we don't know the contents of port B. So, we're going to say that port B has the value of X. We don't know these values, but they have something inside them. So, what we're going to do is we're going to OR. Now, remember that this, this here is as if we were writing... So we are actually performing an OR operation between three constants. So the one shifted to and one shifted three OR would be this. Now, what would be the result of ORing these two numbers? Well, uh, since we don't know the contents of X, it would remain X. But when we have a one in an OR, we are making sure that these two bits are gonna be on. So what we're doing here is that we are not modifying the port B, 
we only turn on two bits. Now what happens we want to turn off specific bits? Well, we do something very similar but with the AND expression. For example, to turn off the bits number 2, 5 and 7, we can use this expression. Now take a look that we have here the bitwise NOT. Now why is that? Again, DDR A, we don't know the content, so I'm going to put X here. Now, if we AND this with the constant, then the result would be... Now, the question is, am I turning off bits number 2, 7, and 5? No. I actually, these bits, I have what I originally had. I did not clear them. On the contrary, I clear what I did not want to be modified. So that's why we are inverting the constant. So in bits number 2, 7, and 5, we're going to have actually a 0. And on the other ones, we're going to have a 1. And the result of this operation would be... And as you can see, we're clearing the bits we want, which is 2, 7, and 5, and the remaining information is not being modified. And finally, we can have some functions. Again, the functions are uh, something that the compiler can do for us uh, with some expressions. Here are some of the ones that we will use. Thank you very much for watching.